viidakossa. Itse asiassa <laughs> multistream ei toimi. Streamlapsilla taas on asiat vähän niin kuin vinksin vonksin. Jonkinlainen käyttökatko. Ei voi mitään sille, mutta mun täytyy vaan tää pistää myöhemmin sitten YouTubeen ja pasee ladattuna. Tänä viikonloppuna ei ole äh, lähetyksiä alan Ropekonissa. Mutta kiinnittäkää huomiota tähän taustaan. Tää on tekoälyn generoima tausta. Eli tällaista kun Mid Journey nimistä tekoälyä aloin käyttää niin kuvien tekemiseen. Ja tuun jatkossakin itse asiassa tuottamaan sillä niin grafiikkaa näihin lähetyksiin. Mutta. Tämä on tämmönen näin niin kuin James Bond henkinen peli, jossa pääsee muun muassa syömään käärmeitä. Mut me varmaan niin kuin, tässä ei ottuu kylmän sodan aikaa. Ää, niin, niin me varmaan päästään oikeasti vasta tänään kattelemaan alkuintroja. Joten ei muuta kuin hypätään vaan mukaan. Ää, ja nyt sitten kova valinta. Jos mä nyt normaalilla pelaan, niin ehkä se ei ole yhtä kipeätä kuin kakkosen pelaaminen. Kakkonen oli vaikeampi. The world was split into two, east and west. This marked the beginning of the era called the Cold War. Yeah, so check kick it just there. Yeah, we're going to catch more. Aloitimme juuri kymmenisen päästä. Ää, emulaattorina toimii Xenia, mikä on Xbox-emulaattori PC. Tämä on siis toinen Metal Gear Solid-peli, mitä mä oon täältä samalta levyltä pelannut. Viis Valkkirista löytyy huono laatunen versio. Foxhoundin yksikkö näköjään. Cigar. Connecting oxygen hose to interior connector. Oh, damn it, with that cigar. Tämä tyyppi on siis Big Boss, eli niin kuin. Does this panty waist know what he's doing? Se se kestää Snakey, Solid Snake oli siinä kloni. Ten minutes to drop off. Hey, are you deaf? Olemme kaikki tosi ammattilaisia ilmeisesti. Depressurization complete. Checking oxygen supply. Six minutes to drop off. Opening rear hatch. Two minutes 
se kai on ihan mahdollista. Okei. Ensimmäinen haloi. Kuulis, että ne olis testannu sitä harjoituksessa ennen, ennen kuin ne tekee sen oikeesti. Jatkellaan selviytymispuukko teipattuu jalkaa. Toi ei ole välttämättä turvallista lähteä pyörimään. Nää on niin kovat tyyppiä, tää vaan lentää. Pitkosi on. Kojimalta taas. Täysin outo videopeli. Jack, I've got some important news. The head of the CIA has finally given us the green light for the virtuous mission. Virtual mission? No, the virtuous mission. The future of our Fox unit depends on it. If it succeeds, we'll be officially organized into a unit. Virtuous mission? Sounds like some kind of initiation ritual. You know, don't get cocky. This isn't a training op. Right. So what exactly is this wonderful mission? Well... So, hyvällinen tehtävä. About two years ago, a certain Soviet scientist requested asylum in the West through one of our moles. His name is Nikolai Stepanovich Sokolov. Sokolov. He's head of the OKB754 Design Bureau, one of the Soviet's top secret weapon research facilities, and the East's foremost expert on weapons development. Sokolov, isn't he that famous rocket scientist? The very same. On April the 12th, 1961, the Soviets achieved the first manned space flight in history. The Earth was blue, but there was no God. Well spoken. The rocket that carried Yuri Gagarin to orbit was the A-1, known as the Vostok rocket. Sokolov is said to be the man most responsible for the multi-engine cluster used in that rocket. After Gagarin's flight, Sokolov left rocket development become the head of the newly established design bureau. From a lowly technician to head of a design bureau, that's quite a success story. So why do you want to defect? It seems he'd become afraid of his own creations. Afraid? Call it a crisis of conscience. And for that, he left his country and his family behind and went over the fence? Not exactly. One of his conditions was that his family was also to be taken safely to the West. Used the mole to get the family out first, and succeeded in sneaking Sokolov over the Berlin Wall shortly afterwards. Okay. Eli I was the one who conducted the operation. The security on the eastern side was still full of holes back then. Then what? We got Sokolov over in one piece, but the whole ordeal had left him exhausted, and we checked him into a hospital in West Berlin. It took him two weeks and more than 600 miles to get from the research facility in the Soviet Union to Berlin. He was in no condition to say anything coherent. And it was only a week later that we had something much bigger on our hands. The Cuban Missile Crisis. October the 16th, 1962, President Kennedy received word that the Soviets were flying intermediate range ballistic missiles in Cuba. The President demanded that the Soviets dismantle the same time he announced a naval blockade to prevent further missile shipments from reaching Cuba. But the Soviets didn't back down, instead placing their armed forces on secondary alert. Soviet transport ships carrying missiles continued on course towards Cuba. US and Soviet forces went on alert for an all-out nuclear war. Frantic negotiations were conducted through the UN's Emergency Security Council and unofficial channels to end the hair-trigger standoff. Finally, on October the 28th, the Soviet Union agreed to remove its missiles from Cuba. And so the world avoided a nuclear holocaust. But in order to get the Soviets to pull their missiles out, we had to make a deal. You mean the one where the US agreed to remove its IRBMs from Turkey? No. The Jupiter IRBMs deployed in Turkey were obsolete. And we were going to get rid of them anyway. They had no strategic value whatsoever to either the U.S. or the okay, Russians. The Turkey deal was a ruse, him. a cover story that was fed to the other intelligence agencies around the world. So, so what the did the Russians really want? Sokolov. Okay. They wanted us to return to Sokolov. Yes. You mean the Soviets pulled out of Cuba just to get their hands on Sokolov? 
That's right. What the hell was he working on? At the time, we had no idea. We were running out of time. It was either give up Sokolov or risk full-scale nuclear war. In the end, we had no choice. President Kennedy gave in to Khrushchev's demand. The next day, I got Sokolov out of the hospital, handing him over to agents on the eastern side. Sokolov kept on screaming, save me, until he disappeared from my side. Okay, kaveri romahti ihan täysin. Then a month ago, we received some new information from one of our moles. About Sokolov? Yes. He was taken back to the research facility and forced to continue working on the weapon in question under KGB supervision. What's more, it's on the verge of completion. So what kind of weapon is it? Something to do with space rockets? No, missiles. Same technology. I guess you're right. We don't know the details, but it appears to be a new kind of nuclear device. For half a year now, the Soviets have been conducting frequent nuclear tests at semi-palatinsk. Something to do with the weapon, I assume. We're talking about a secret weapon so big that Khrushchev was ready to pull out of Cuba to get it back. Is Sokolov still in the facility? No. According to our intelligence, he's in Selino Yask place in the mountains about three miles to the west that's known as the Virgin Cliffs. The Virgin Cliffs? Nice name for a virtuous mission. They moved him there just recently. Why? Apparently, they're conducting a field test of the weapon, but it's our best chance to get him back. This mission would never have been possible if he was still in the research facility. This is our last chance. Sokolov must have known that too when he contacted us. Ennen, ennen kuin hyppäsin lentokoneesta. Listen up, Jack. Your mission is to infiltrate Selino Yask in the Soviet mountains, ensure the safety of Sokolov, and bring him back to the West. Sokolov back before that weapon is complete, we'll be facing a major crisis. The clock is ticking. Once we've confirmed the rescue of Sokolov, stand by at the recovery point. A recovery balloon will be dropped at that point. Helium will be pumped into the balloon to inflate it. The process takes about 20 minutes. Once it's complete, the gunship's arm will latch onto the balloon and pull it up. The Fulton surface-to-air recovery system. I'm familiar with the theory. Take it easy. It's been combat-proof. Do you think Sokolov is up to it? The shock will be less than during a parachute jump, and the arm can handle up to 500 pounds. So you're planning on going over the border in a single combat talent? She's equipped with two six-barrel 20mm Vulcan cannons, as well as two 40mm machine guns. Sounds like she could hold her own against a battalion of tanks. Even with the fuel in the reserve tank, we're facing a four-hour time limit. If all goes well, it shouldn't take more than a few hours. Home in time for dinner. But if anything goes wrong, you'll be eating dinner, breakfast, and all the rest of your meals in the jungle. Keutuminen metsää. Au, 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 au. Jaha, sinne jäi kassi. Kova jätkä tuli jaaloilleen.
Do you copy? You're already in enemy territory, and somebody might be listening in. From here on out, we'll be using code names to refer to each other. Your code name for this mission will be Naked Snake. I'll, ask the, I'll, ask I'll be snake. referring to you as Snake from now on. You're not to mention your real name. Snake? Huh. What, you don't like snakes? What do you mean? Well, you've eaten one before, haven't you? In survival training. <laughs> All of them just, uh... I'm glad to hear that. Just as I've like ever ordered one in a restaurant, but... Be careful, you might not have a choice. What about you, Major? What should I call you? Hmm, let's see. Hey, hey, I'll, hey, be... Know, I'll be Tom. Call Major, me Major Tom. Tom. Okay. This will be a sneaking mission. You must not be seen by the enemy. You must leave no trace of your presence. Is that clear? This kind of infiltration is the Fox unit's speciality. In other words, weapons and equipment to procure on site. That goes for food as well. You're completely naked, just as your name implies. Great. Now I see why you asked me if I like snakes. I suppose calling me Snake was your idea of a joke, too. No. There's a good reason for that. I'll tell you later when the time is right. Yeah. Gotcha. Getting back to the subject, how exactly am I supposed to feed myself? You've been issued a knife and a tranquilizer gun. Use them to hunt for food. You'll also find some medical supplies in your backpack. Yeah, about the backpack. I lost it in a tree on the way down. I see. Well, you'd better go back and get it then. You know where it is? No problem. I can see it from here. It's stuck on a branch. To climb a tree, stand in front of a tree that's covered in ivy and press the action button. I'll be monitoring your progress over the radio. We can't risk violating Soviet airspace, but I'll be in the gunship. My frequency is 140.85. I'll give you a call if I need to talk to you. If you need to talk to me, use the send function. Okay, Snake, go get your backpack. Joo, tässä on tää... Eli tän, tän niin kun, äh, maastoasun, niin se vaikuttaa siihen, kuinka paljon, kuinka hyvin se on nähtävillä. Ruokaa, ruokaa, eikä mitään muuta. Hei, se on sieni. Maskeleita saattaa olla tietysti omatkin. Action button on tässä. Okei, okay, se on toi keltainen y -nappi. Xboxin ohjaimella. I see you've retrieved your backpack, Snake. To equip a weapon, it's necessary to take it out of your backpack. In the survival viewer, choose weapon from the backpack. Your available weapons will be displayed in a window in the upper left. From that list, choose the weapon you want to equip and press the enter button. For other equipped items, just do the same thing from item. Got it. Use the survival viewer backpack. Yep, that's right. Survival is fundamental to this mission. After you've been out in the field for a while, your stamina will start to drop. If your stamina gets too low, it'll affect your performance. You won't be able to shoot accurately, for example, and your wounds won't heal as smoothly. Keep an eye on your stamina so you don't run out. 
To recover lost stamina, you can hunt for local Joo, tämä stamina tuli tässä pelissä uutena sitten. You can use My only weapon is a Mark 22 Hush Puppy tranquilizer gun. That's right. It's been fitted with its own suppressor. However, the suppressor will deteriorate every time you fire. Once its durability reaches zero, the noise suppression effect will be gone. So don't get too trigger happy yeah, with it. Se, se ei kestänyt hirveästi. Suppressor's itse. durability is shown in the icon. Any weapons and equipment beyond what you're carrying now, you'll have to find as you go. I have to find my own weapons and equipment. Who's crazy idea to this anyway? Solo covert actions are standard Fox operating procedure. You can't leave any traces of your presence. No weapons, equipment, footprints, sweat or bodily waste. The same goes for bullets and cartridges too. Your presence in enemy territory is already a violation of international conventions of warfare. There aren't supposed to be any American soldiers in Russia. It could spark an international incident. You can't let anyone see you. You can't let the enemy know you're there. This is a stealth mission. You're a ghost snake in every sense of the word. And there'll be no rescue if you're captured. Keep on. The military and US government will deny any involvement in the affair. Then I'll just have to take care of myself, huh? I'm afraid so. You've been given a fake death pill for that purpose. SIS guidelines stipulate that soldiers on covert ops like this one be issued a potassium cyanide capsule. Tape it to your body so you can take it when you need to. How generous of you. Use it if you're taken prisoner by the enemy. It will send you into a state of false death for a short time. Fooling them into thinking that I'm really dead. So how do I come back to life? Just take the revival pill. <laughs> You mean that thing they put in my tooth before the mission? That's the one. But be careful. If you remain in a state of false death for too long, nothing will be able to bring you back. Remember that. I'll keep it in mind. You said this was a solo mission, right? Right. I guess that means I can't count on any reinforcements. Correct. The mission rests entirely in your hands. A real one-man army. Relax. There's a support team ready to back you up over the radio. Who? I'll introduce them to you. This time, survival is of utmost importance. The first member of the support team will be in charge of monitoring your physical condition, acting as a medic, so to speak, as well as recording your mission data. She's a member of Fox as well, and she's here on the gunship with me. She? Hello, Snake. I'm paramedic. Nice to meet you. Paramedic. Medic. As in a medic who comes in by parachute. Aren't you going to tell me your real name? Are you going to tell me yours, Mr. Snake? Huh. My name, huh? It's John Doe. And they call you Jack for short. You're a regular Captain Nemo. A name means nothing on the battlefield. After a week, no one has a name. What's your name? Jane Doe. Very funny. I wasn't joking, but I'll tell you my name only if you manage to make it back alive. My frequency is 145.73. She's also in charge of recording your mission data. Whenever you want to save, send a message over the reserved save frequency, 140.96. So saving lets me record my mission data. That's right. It also records the state of your health. Good to know. There's one more person I want to introduce you to, Snake. Huh? Speaking of snakes, you remember the boss, don't you? A legendary soldier and your mentor. Actually, it was the boss that got the DCI's authorization in the first place. She's going to be serving as Fox's mission advisor. The boss is? Hmm. She also helped me plan this mission. She and I were at SAS together. Jack, is that you? How many years has it been? Boss? That's right. It's me. <sighs> Talk to me. Let me hear your voice. It's been five years, 72 days, and 18 hours. I got that. You've lost weight. You can tell just by the sound of my voice. Of course I can. I know all about you. Really? Well, I don't know anything about you. What's that supposed to mean? Why'd you disappear on me all of a sudden? I was on a top secret mission. Hmm. You didn't need me anymore. But there were still so many things I wanted you to teach me. No, I taught you everything you needed to know about fighting techniques. I taught you all I could. The rest you needed to learn on your own. Techniques, sure. But what about how to think like a soldier? How to think like a soldier? 
I can't teach you that. A soldier needs to be strong in spirit, body, and technique. And the only thing you can learn from someone else is technique. In fact, technique doesn't even matter. What's most important is spirit. Spirit and body are like two sides of a single coin. They're the same thing. I can't teach you how to think. You'll just have to figure it out for yourself. Listen to me, Jack. Just because soldiers are on the same side right now doesn't mean they always will be. <clears throat> Having personal feelings about your comrades is one of the worst sins you can commit. Yeah, politics determine who you face on the battlefield. And politics are a living thing. They change along with the times. Yesterday's Down good might be tomorrow's really evil. Is that why you abandoned me? No, it had nothing to do with you. I already told you, Jack. I was on a top secret mission. A soldier has to follow whatever orders he's given. It's not his place to question why. But you're looking for a reason to fight. You're a natural born fighter. But you're not quite a soldier. A soldier is a political tool, nothing more. That's doubly true if he's a career soldier. Right and wrong have no place in his mission. He has no enemies and no friends. Only the mission. You follow the orders you're given. That's what being a soldier is. I do whatever I have to to get the job done. I don't think about politics. That's not the same thing. Sooner or later, your conscience is going to bother you. In the end, you have to choose whether you're going to live as a soldier or just another man with a gun. There's a saying in the Orient, loyalty to the end. Do you know what it means? Being patriotic. It means devoting yourself to your country. I follow the president and the top brass. I'm ready to die for them if necessary. The president and the top brass won't be there forever. Once their terms are up, others will take their place. I follow the will of the leader, no matter who's in charge. People aren't the ones who dictate the missions. Then who does? The times. People's values change over time, and so do the leaders of a country. So there's no such thing as an enemy in absolute terms. The enemies we fight are only enemies in relative terms, constantly changing with the times. As long as we have loyalty to the end, there's no point in believing in anything, even in those we love. And that's the way a soldier's supposed to think. The only thing we can believe in with absolute certainty is the mission, Jack. All right, but do me a favor. What is it? Call me Snake. Snake? Oh, right. Your code name is Snake. It suits you well. That's right. The legendary unit that the boss put together during World War II was a snake. The Cobra unit. A group of heroes that brought the war to an end and saved the world. As long okay. as you've got a legendary hero backing you up, you'll be fine. Isn't that right, Snake? Yeah. I can't think of anyone else I'd rather have with me. Oh, and one more thing, boss. Yes? It's good to hear your voice again. Yeah. Same here. After all, who knows if either of us will make it out alive. Snake, you are always best at urban warfare and infiltrating buildings. But this is the jungle. Survival is going to be key. Those CQC techniques I taught you are sure to come in handy. CQC? Close quarters combat, huh? I've been in the Green Berets for the past few years. I'm probably pretty rusty. Not to worry. I'll be here to help you remember. After all, this is your first actual survival mission. I'll be supporting you over the radio. Where are you, boss? Next to the Major? The boss is communicating with us by radio from aboard a permit-class submarine in the Arctic uh -huh. Ocean. My frequency is 141.80. Call me if you need my advice on battle techniques. Gotcha. Your mission is to retrieve Dr. Sokolov. Dr. Sokolov is being held in an abandoned factory located to the north of your current position. Avoid heavy combat and don't let anyone see you. Don't forget that this is a stealth mission. Snake, try to remember some of the basics of CQC. Commencing virtuous mission now.
Okay. Sonari, mikä näyttää pieniä eläimiä. Liiketutka. Oo, oh, se on snake. Haha. Snake muuttuu yhtäkkiä ruokapakkaukseksi. Mitäs muuta syötävää me muutos löytää täältä näin. Mä oon nyt tehnyt kaksi kertaa sen vihreän, että mä en oo vaan niinku hamstrannut näitä ruokapaketteja että tässä Metal Gear Solidissa on jonkin verran ongelmia. Okei. Okay. Näköjään tää toimii huomattavasti mukavammin, mutta tää first person kuin aikaisemmin. Sikari löytyy, fake des. Kiikarit löytyy. Ketään saa pois tän vaimentimen. Enkkäri vaan pois ne. Pikkuhiljaa. Mä en tuon täytyy sieniä vaan mietin, että jos saisi käyttöä. Noin. Arvasin, että ton saa. Tää muistin. Mä oon kerran pelannut siis tän aikaisemmin läpi. Niin ei toi, ei ollutkaan sieni. Mun mielestä täällä oli sieni. Niin kun mä pääsen enää tästä. Selvä. Three muhis, one plant. Tässä voi vähän niinku sotata itseään. Tässä näkyy, että paljonko tässä näin niinku tulee miinusta. Tai plussaa tohon noin. Mitä isompi prosentti, niin sitä parempi. Tämmönen Vietnam-tyyppinen. Joo, se on parempi. Tiger Stripe on vielä parempi. Niin joo, tummassa, tummassa tota noin niinku metsässä. Ollaan 35. Giant Anaconda. No niin, nyt syötiin käärmettä sitten. Tää liiketutka ei välttämättä niinku sillai on niinku hirveen hyödyllinen. Tässä tuolla on jotain. Aktiivikuulosoimat on tosi kätevät kyllä metsässä. Ahaa, siinä oli... Sääsentää. Ah, 
Ah, se on alle, allikaattori. Tai krokotiili. Mä en tiedä kyllä miltä krokotiili maistuu, ei varmaan. Aa, ah, se heräs. Okay. Look at your life gauge. You're on your last leg. No. I can still <gasps> see. Snake, this is a solo sneaking mission. Do you know what that means? Tati Huto. Yeah. No, you don't. Huh? It means there's no backup, no cavalry. If you're taken out, nobody is there to take your place. <sighs> Pull out for now and recuperate. Find a hiding place and get some rest. Your life gauge will gradually recover with time. But the speed of your life gauge recovery depends on the level of your stamina gauge. So get plenty to eat, then get some rest. You hear me? Do you hear me? I hear you. Fuck you, is it? Ah, what the damn shit! Crocodile, bye. He. That must be the servant who's poor. Can't get any more. Hear me? Joo, kyllä sitten toi heltti näköjään tulee pikkasen ta takaisin. Joka ihan hyvällä, hyvällä tota noin niinku... Tässä on ilmeisesti ihan hirveä määrä niinku erilaisia... Äh, tommosia niinku... Pelimekaniikoita. Tänne. Pokemonisia varmaan on. Okei, näe kyllä mihin. Pitäisikö tästä sokkona ampua vai? Supermetsästä ja työssä.
Se on sammakko. Jaa, mä näen sen. Pistolilla sammakko. Ja toinen sammakko. No, jos olisimme Ranskassa, niin tämä olisi... ...jonkinlainen juhlaateria. Disgusting. <laughs> Ei ole hyvä. Okei, okay, syönään sijainen. Katsotaan, onko tää hyvä. Okei, okay, ei ollut hyvä. Kumpikaan. Saikohan tässä ruokamyrkytystä kans? Ennen kuin lähdetään hölmöilemään, niin tehdään jotain järkevää vaihteeksi. Ja se on ta tallentaa peli. Hey Snake, you ever heard of Godzilla King of Monsters? Yo. No, what is it? It's a movie. You haven't seen it? Nope. It's about this monster yeah, called Godzilla, who grows to an enormous size in a nuclear test and goes on a rampage in Tokyo. Nuclear test, huh? Then the Marshall Islands must be crawling with giant monsters right about now. It's just make-believe. Maybe that's why my pants have been so tight lately. Snake, it's a movie, not a report out of <laughs> Los Alamos. I know. So then what happened? Godzilla is immune to all weapons, and humanity has no way to stop the monster. Dr. Sirizawa develops a new type of weapon, but meanwhile, Godzilla is getting closer and closer to Tokyo, obliterating everything in its path. It was originally a Japanese movie, but they made an American version, too. I recommend seeing the original Japanese one if you ever get the chance. It's mostly mindless fun, but it's also got a serious anti-nuke message as well. Where can I see the original? You'll just have to go to Japan. <laughs> really? That's too bad. Well, if you wait 40 years, you might be able to see it in America, too. Why is that? 2004 will be Godzilla's 50th birthday. You think they're still going to be making Godzilla movies, then? Of course! Everybody loves Godzilla. You sure know a lot about movies. I don't suppose you're the movie-watching type, are you? Not really. Okay, then I'll tell you everything I know. <laughs> when the going gets tough, movies can save your life. It's always good to be able to look at things from a different perspective when you get in a jam. That's the magic of movies. No kidding. Well, I guess it might at least make a nice distraction. That's the spirit, Snake. Have a little fun. Hey. I see you've caught a tree frog. The tree frog is a green frog that's found throughout Asia. It's arboreal, spending most of its time in shrubs and bushes. Use the tranquilizer gun to catch one alive. I bet you could scare an enemy good if you toss ah, one there. But the tree frogs that live in that jungle are a lot bigger than ordinary tree frogs. They've got an appetite, huh? You've got a one-track mind, don't you? But seriously, that is one theory. However, there are people who think it's a mutation caused by nuclear testing and waste from the research facility. Yeah, I ate one, but it didn't taste that great. Is that all you ever think about? What else is there? Lots. Like what? Like why a frog would get so big in the first place. Whether it's a temporary phenomenon created by a unique environment, mm. or a permanent mark of evolution, or a product of the toxic waste coming out of the research facility. If it is the waste that's causing it, then it means humans are interfering with the ecosystem. It really makes you think about the changing relationship between... This isn't interesting. Oh, fine. Be that way. Camouflage is an indispensable tool when you're sneaking through the jungle. To use camouflage, first press the start button to go to the survival viewer. Then select camouflage and press the enter button. Kiitos, kiitos. Tiedetään tämä jo. 
snake, be careful of that swamp. What's dangerous about it? <laughs> it's a bottomless swamp. Okay. A bottomless swamp? Yes. The mud in that swamp is highly viscous. It will stick to your body like tar. It will be impossible for you to swim. If you get swallowed by the bottomless swamp, you won't be able to escape on your own. Once you sink down to about head level, you'll be trapped for good. Make sure you get out before that happens. Okay, niin tästä so, tulee toi I have to make sure I don't death stranding in the mechanic. Snake, wait. There's more. Yes. What? Crocodiles. Yo. Crocodiles. What must Yes. Crocodiles. Like the reptile. That's correct. More accurately, they're Indian gavials. What are crocs doing deep in this forest? You'll have to ask paramedic about that one. Paramedic? Yes. The Indian gavial is a crocodile that originally lived in freshwater regions in India and uh -huh. Nepal. Why are Indian crocodiles way out here? They're captive crocodiles that were brought here for research purposes but escaped and became wild again. Okay. Indian gavials are large creatures. Adult males grow to over six meters in length. You'll never catch one alive, even if you use the tranquilizer gun. Got it. So, how do they... Taste? Yes, I did look into that. You know what they always say, tastes like chicken. Sounds delicious. But be careful when capturing an Indian gavial. Normally they're cowardly creatures, but the ones in the forest there are belligerent. Apparently they attack humans. Yo. What do you mean? They weren't the direct subject of any serious research, but some think they may have become violent as a side effect of the atomic research that was conducted nearby. Uh-huh. Well, give up. Do you want to save? Jotkut on... Snake, do you know the creature from the Black Lagoon? <laughs> the nope, way. never heard of it. These Maybe scientists are that. investigating a place deep in the Amazon called the Black Lagoon. Second and they get picked off one around. after the other by this fish man thing. And there was the scene when the heroine is going for a swim and the creature sneaks up on her from underwater. Oh, I thought my heart was going to stop. I mean, of course, the 3D effects and it came from outer space were a lot more intense, but... It wouldn't be referring to you coming from outer space, would it? <laughs> How rude! Why do you say that? Because no one on Earth could be as charming as you. Uh... <laughs> Fine, I'll just get to the point, Snake. Be careful of what's around you when you're in the water. Just imagining you swimming in those jungle rivers makes me think of you being attacked by a fish man. I appreciate the concern. Fishmen aren't the only things that'll attack you in the water. Really be careful out there. Okay. Okay. And don't be attacking any pretty girls going for a swim either. Are you calling me a fish man? You started it. <laughs> okay. Kyllä, kyllä. All right. Tätä... Tämä oli tosiaan niin kuin Metal Gear Solid kolmosen alku. Ää, katsottiin pakollista alkuintrot käytännössä. Tässä on tutoriaalitynkää. Tämä on itse asiassa tutoriaalitehtävä. Ja tosiaan ensi viikolla pääsen ehkä, ehkä niin kuin tähän peliin uudestaan tutustumaan. Sillain, niin. Mutta ei muuta kuin hyvää viikonloppua kaikille. Itse olen Robeconissa. Pitäkää teki hauskaa. Hyvää. Yöni ei ole jatko.